So I'm going to start a painting of the SpaceX launch this time. Um, first of all, I need to put my uh, underpainting on. So um, my usual yellow ochre, um, thinned down with liquid. Um, I rub it all over and uh, just to create an, an overall base. Just give a warmer feeling to the painting uh, rather than painting straight onto white. I'm remembering to do the edges as well because of course I will paint around the edges. I just use a very soft cloth and uh, rub it all over. It's very rough, it doesn't really need to be really smooth. And I'm going to mark on now uh, where the, um, the base of the horizon line is and the line of the lake. And uh, I use that using my, my brush and I just mark out the same spacing on either side and in the center of the board. And then I will also cheat a little bit because I want my lines to be straight using a ruler here. But I will go over this freehand just to sort of um, give myself a rough feel for, for uh, where everything is. And I will also, having done this, um, put in roughly where the rocket is launching and also roughly where the scaffolding is for the fuel tank and so on. So I can get the, the spacing of the sky, the colouring of the tones of the sky in roughly the right place with roughly the right um, density. I'm using titanium white, um, cerulean blue, a little bit of French ultramarine blue and if I need to darken it down, a tiny touch of Payne's Grey. Uh, again, you see I'm being fairly rough with it. I just block in the colour around the areas where I know I'm going to have the rocket actually launching um, and the large clouds of smoke and steam rising up um, because obviously they're going to be sort of shades of white and grey and um, yellows and oranges and um, some dark purpley um, grey as well where it's darker. Um, I'll block in, um, you can see the darker bits of blue I'm putting on here are actually um, mainly cerulean blue and French ultramarine and I'm also just tapping on some titanium white where I want to lighten it up. Having got the main colour in I will then fan brush to smooth it all out, give myself a nice smooth base as you can see here. This is where I've actually completed that and I will now start putting in the clouds of steam and smoke. So these I, I'm putting in a, in a fairly rough way and I'm going to be layering these a lot. So whilst I will start with one layer of um, the main colour, so some um, orange colour made from titanium white, cadmium yellow deep and some permanent rose and my darks are made from um, my blues, some permanent mauve and a little touch of um, Payne's grey. As you can see, I put several layers on, so I, I create a layer, I go over it, I create another layer, I go over it. I'm looking to find the areas of light and dark where the colour is the most intense. And, and whilst doing that, also to create that feeling of um, steam rising, you know, I don't want a solid block of colour there, or what looks like a mountain. <laughs> um, and, you know, initially, some of it does, so I've got to work on that and keep creating that sense of it being um, diffuse, because that's what it is, of course, it's clouds of steam and smoke um, as the rocket launches. So I'll continue to add more layers and in between each layer and obviously I will go in and uh, soften up with my fan brush and uh, try and create this sense of um, the clouds billowing, the smoke billowing. Uh, so I'll put highlights in and lowlights and uh, gradually I will get to the point where I feel I've got um, some sense of that huge plume of uh, smoke and steam that's coming up there. So it's quite a long process doing this and um, after a while you, know, you do have to leave it and come back to it. So I'm going to add in some of the foreground now, some of the, um, the lake that's in front of the launch point. Um, the sunlight and the, um, the, the, the light coming through from the launch itself is falling onto the water, a little bit like it's a sunset, although it's not a sunset. Uh, so I've added some of that in. Um, my colours for the, the lake are um, French ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, um, some titanium white. I will put in some darks with Payne's grey and um, the, um, the band of um, 
bushes and shrubs um, are mainly sap green and um, Payne's grey with a little bit of highlight in there with titanium white and some cadmium yellow deep and a touch of permanent rose because there is that sort of orangey feel to it. So again, you see, I'm still going over these um, clouds of steam. They're not quite right. They're not quite what I want. So I keep going back, darkening up now. And um, when I've got to the point where I feel like there's enough darkening, I'm going to start putting in my rocket because I think that's going to help. And um, here it is. So I'm actually using a very fine brush here. Um, I've waited for the paint to dry, so I am painting onto a dry surface here and uh, I'm gradually building up the rocket um, in layers. Uh, I want a nice bright light sense to it, but I'm having to be very careful. Now this is where you could use something like a marl stick to be able to um, really keep your hand steady. Um, I have one, I don't often use it because I'm a little bit um, awkward with it and um, you know if I'm, I'm feeling very steady handed I can work without it and, and I feel better working without it. So um, just starting to put in the, the boosters and the rocket um, launchers here, um, creating a bit more detail on the rocket. Um, you can see below I've got that, um, that great whoosh of um, steam and smoke where it, uh, as the rocket launches and shoots out from um, its launch point, I will come back and um, add more to that at the moment. It's really kind of a placement at the moment so I can put the rocket into the right place. And um, there it is, so I'm gradually building this up and um, I also need to put in some tiny highlights on it and you know, the, the flames and the heat that uh, were there as it launched. So more and more detail. It, it helps when you're building up something that is very finely detailed to, to do a little bit at a time. Um, now I, I feel like I need a little bit of more stray smoke here just to add to that feel of everything escaping into the atmosphere with the rocket. So I'm just going to touch in some tiny little bits of uh, white highlight and then fan brush them to soften them to give them that, that diffuse effect of smoke scattering into the um, atmosphere um, and again I, I go on it uh, keep adding to it until I feel like I have enough there now the key point to this is to stand back from time to time and look because quite often you you've either done enough um, and you need to stop or you haven't done enough and you need to add more and you only get that real overview by standing back. Now I've stood back here and I've decided I really need to put a lot more into this blast of um, smoke and steam and the power coming out the, um, the rocket as it launches and I've, I'm adding this in in titanium white but also I'm using cadmium yellow mixed with titanium white for that yellow fiery effect um, and the very last thing I will do and I will have waited for the paint underneath to be as dry as possible is to put in the scaffolding the fuel tank um, supports and um, and the, the um, launch tower and I'm using this by popping in very fine lines using the edge of my palette knife. Now you can touch in again with a very fine paintbrush, which I'm doing here, little bits of extra detail, but you can get a really amazing fine line, a fine detail line with the edge of a palette knife. Now I'm using a very small rectangular palette knife here. I used a longer palette knife, but the one that I would normally use for mixing my paint to create the longer lines. And as you can see, I can put in quite a lot of nice detail there just with the edge of the palette knife. Um, and again, I'm going to do it here with this other tower. Um, and I've, again, this is on to dry paint, although of course it's not completely dry, so I, as I pop the edge of the palette knife on, I will also start to pick up some of the paint underneath that I've painted as I break the surface, break the skin of the paint. 
So be aware that you will do that as you're, you're working in this way. Be very gentle with it. And if you don't want to do that, um, you know, have such a light touch that you barely touch the actual surface of the paint. Um, and again, I'm using a mix of um, palette knives here, my very small triangular one, so I can get nice pointed details, tiny little points of paint on there. And touch it up again with a, a very fine uh, paintbrush. This one is a watercolour brush. I do actually use watercolour brushes quite a bit when I'm painting very fine detail. As long as you clean them up properly, they do last. Um, you know, but obviously if you don't clean them, then the paint will very quickly dry on them and they'll be useless. But again, I'm going backwards and forwards and where I make an error, I just tie, take it out very lightly with either a wet wipe or a, um, a, a small piece of um, kitchen roll. And I keep going over it, adding in the detail. Now this is, can be quite difficult because sometimes when you're putting in this kind of detail, you're also putting in lights and darks. So you've got to layer up where you're putting the darks over the lights. Um, and again, see how I'm doing a little bit here. I'm just putting a little touch of light in here. So this is with some titanium white um, because I just want to lift it out of the clouds, if you like, lift it out of the clouds of steam and smoke. And, I, and to do that, I really need to have a contrast, a very big contrast between the background and the detail in the foreground. So that's what I'm adding in here with my palette knife, very close, carefully, very slowly. And uh, again, between each um, addition of paint, I will stand back and look. So having stood back here, I realise that, you, you know, actually I really need to give more kind of base and substance to the steam and the smoke that these platforms are, are coming out of. So I've added that in again. Um, softening up where I need to with the um, fan brush. And in some instances, not softening it, leaving it there because I actually want some crispness to show, to really provide that contrast. Um, because these um, platforms are really quite delicate structures as they're portrayed in, in the painting. Although they're not, obviously, they're very solid structures, but in the painting they stand out as quite spindly, quite frail, and um, I, I want that feeling there, combined with the, the feel of the power of the rocket launching and all this mass of steam and smoke around it. Um, it creates quite a surreal um, picture uh, you know, to um, with lots of contrast. So, um, adding in wherever I need to that contrast, which includes more highlights with, uh, you know, the um, the lightness of the smoke, and um, again, softening up where I need to, so I don't have hard lines, um, but also being extremely careful around uh, where I've already painted. And there is the launch of the SpaceX rocket. Um, second time around <laughs> my launch <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this and um, do go and have a look on my website www.debramartin.co.uk for other paintings I've done and also please do have a look at some of my other painting demos on my YouTube channel thank you